Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so in this video, I will be discussing the second part of the visual pathway in which I want to discuss regarding something which is called as anterior knee of Von Wilbrand. Okay. And if you haven't watched the first part of this video, I recommend that you go and watch that video first in which I have covered the layers of the retina and the basics of the visual pathway. After watching that video, if you watch this video, things will be more clearer. Okay. And uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel to get continuous updates. So what is this anterior knee of Von Wilbrand? Let's see. Let's, let's clear the things about the this anterior knee of Von Wilbrand. So in this diagram here, we are seeing a visual pathway, a part of the optic nerve, optic chiasm and the optic tract. And uh, this is the uh, left optic tract or the optic nerve and this is the right optic nerve. So here we can see in the left optic nerve the fibers which are represented by the green. Okay, These are the nasal fibers and the fibers which are represented by red. These are the temporal fibers. So as usual what is happening the nasal fibers are crossing over to the opposite side in the optic chiasma and what is happening to the temporal fibers? The temporal fibers are remaining on the same side. Similarly, from the other side that is from the uh, right side of the optic nerve, the nasal fibers are going to cross over and the point where they are crossing over is what is called as the optic chiasma. But it doesn't, it's not as simple as it is looking here because there are few fibers who just don't cross over in the way I have shown you. So what is going to happen? See, I want you to concentrate on this, these fibers. Yeah, these one wherein I am putting the arrow mark. You are seeing these are all, these are also nasal fibers belonging to the right sided optic nerve. But what is happening is instead of crossing over, What's happening here is that they are entering into the optic nerve of the opposite side. Here you can see these fibers, they are entering into the optic nerve of the opposite side and then they are forming this loop here. Then they are forming this loop and then they are going posteriorly and joining the optic tract. So these loop of fibers which you are seeing which enter into the opposite optic nerve instead of straight forwardly decussating with the nasal fibers of the opposite side. So these are forming a loop here. So this loop of fiber is what is called as the anterior knee of von Wilbrand. Okay. So why this anterior knee of von Wilbrand is important is it is very much important clinically. So let's say there is a lesion. So where is the lesion? The lesion could be somewhere here. So this is the part wherein the optic, which is the junction between the optic tract and the optic chiasm. So if at all there is a lesion occurring here, at this level, what fiber? So where is the lesion occurring? The lesion is occurring at the left junction of optic nerve and optic chiasm. Okay, so what fibers could be injured? So what fibers are injured? What are the fibers which are present in the left optic nerve? In the left optic nerve or else we are having what is called as the ipsilateral nasal fibers as well as the ipsilateral temporal fibers. These ones. So this nasal fibers are gone and as well as the temporal fibers are gone. Not only that, along with that, there is also lesion of these fibers which are forming the loop. So what were these fibers? These fibers were called as the anterior knee of von Willebrand. And what are those fibers? Those fibers are nothing but the contralateral nasal fibers. Contralateral nasal fibers. So we have understood if at all there is a lesion at the junction of the optic nerve and the optic chiasm, three fibers are going to be uh, losing their function. One is the ipsilateral nasal fibers, second one is the ipsilateral temporal fibers and the third one is the contralateral nasal fibers. Now it's 
very important to understand what is the function of these contralateral nasal fibers okay these contralateral nasal fibers as you are seeing here in the slide they are carrying the information from the inferior part of the retina they are carrying the information from the inferior part of the retina okay so if they are carrying information from the inferior part of the retina which part of the visual field defect is going to occur the visual field defect which is going to occur will be in the superior part so there is going to be a superior visual field defect okay so the superior visual field defect will be which side because these are the nasal fibers the superior visual field defect will be in the temporal side of the right right eye okay and then there is loss of ipsilateral nasal and ipsilateral temporal fibers so nasal fibers are gone means which side of the visual field defect we are going to see we are going to see the temporal visual field defect and temporal fibers are gone means which visual field defects we are going to see we are going to see a nasal visual field defect so if i have to chart the visual field let's say okay and then again as usual i will divide these visual fields into two quadrants so this i will label it as right this i will label it as right this will be nasal this will be temporal again this will be nasal and this will be temporal fine so now on the left hand side there is a lesion so left hand side there is loss of nasal fibers as well as there is loss of temporal fibers so nasal fibers are gone which part of the visual field is gone the temporal half of the visual field is completely gone and the temporal nasal fibers are gone so which part of the visual field is gone the nasal half of the visual field is gone so this is resulting in what is called as anopia anopia is the complete loss of visual field in that particular side now what do you think is going to occur on the opposite side opposite side which fibers are gone opposite side the fibers which are lesioned are the anterior knee of one willebrand fibers these are the nasal fibers so there is going to be a defect in the temporal half of the retina but these nasal fibers are carrying the information from which part of the retina they are carrying the information from the inferior part of the retina that means only the superior quadrant of the visual field defect is going to be there such a visual field defect is what is called as quadrant anopia that is called as quadrant anopia why we are calling as quadrant anopia because only one quadrant of the visual field is gone and this quadrant anopia is limited to which side temporal side or the nasal side it is limited to the temporal side and this quadrant anopia the third thing is whether it is affecting the superior portion or the inferior portion because the inferior nasal fibers are lesion it is affecting the superior portion so we call it as a superior temporal quadrant anopia okay so if these anterior willebrand knee fibers were not there and there would have been a lesion at this level we would have just got anopia on the left side but because of the presence of the anterior willebrand knee fibers which are carrying the sensations from the inferior part of the retina and these are the nasal fibers that's why we are getting the field loss of field vision in the superior temporal quadrant of the visual field okay so here i am showing you what is happening here so what's happening here is there is complete anopia there is complete anopia on the right side that means which fibers are gone the fibers which are gone are ipsilateral temporal fibers as well as the ipsilateral nasal fibers and what is happening here in this side on the uh, left side left side you are seeing where is the defect the defect is only in this area which is that area that is superior and whether it is temporal or nasal always this is temporal and this is nasal so it is superior temporal and only one quadrant is affected so that's why this is called as quadrant 
anopia okay quadrant anopia so if i am getting such a kind of picture whenever i am doing a perimetric examination so i will be pretty sure that the lesion is occurring where the lesion has occurred at the junction of optic nerve and optic chiasma optic nerve and the optic chiasma so in this diagram like this is the right side and this is the left side where could be the lesion the lesion is at the right junction of optic nerve with the optic chiasma and such a kind of lesion is what it is called as it is called as junctional scotoma it is called as the junctional scotoma so if at all i see such a kind of picture in the perimetry my diagnosis will be that there is a lesion which has occurred at the junction of the optic nerve with the optic chiasma right side there is complete anopia and on the left side what i am getting is i am getting a superior temporal quadrant anopia a combination of these two things is suggesting to me that the lesion is at the right junction of the optic nerve and the optic chiasma although not very important for the undergraduate students but such kind of questions they are asking in the neat pg as well as in the they can ask you in the next pg they will just give you the perimetric picture and they will ask you to identify where is the site of lesion so here the site of lesion is at the right side of the junction of the optic nerve with the optic chiasma they can change it to the left side also and this condition is what is called as the junctional scotoma so this is the clinical importance of the anterior knee of von willebrand fibers which are nothing but the fibers coming from the opposite half of the retina these are the nasal fibers but where they are they are they are uh, getting the information from the inferior side of the retina that's why there is loss of vision in the superior quadrant of the temporal side on the opposite side if at all there is the lesion at the junction okay thanks a lot stay tuned for my third video on the visual pathway